Welcome to the lair of the Batty Boffin. Hi there Batty fans, time for a little bit of science with the Batty Boffin. Today we are going to be looking at the science behind melting and insulation. What we're going to do is look at ways that we can keep things either cool or hot. We're going to choose cool today. And what we're going to do is have some ice and we're going to see how well we can stop it melting by doing different things to the container it's in. So for this experiment you are going to need some containers. Just little plastic boxes like this are fine. First of all I'm going to have a control which is just the box as it is, just like that. That's my control. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a lid on one of the boxes, okay? So just the normal plastic lid. And I'm thinking that might act a little bit like a greenhouse, sort of enclosed, but the light can get through. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a cover over it. This is my first cover, which is white, and I've padded it with some kitchen towels. So that should make it insulating, I'm thinking, and that will fit over the top all the way down to the ground. So that's going to be a first cover. The next cover I'm using is silver foil and again that will just go all the way down to the ground like that so that's a very reflective covering. And for the third one I'm using matte black. What I've done here is I've, I've used, um, this is what I cook my banana bread in, and I've covered it just to make it really extra matte and black, is I've covered it with paint. Uh, this doesn't in any fancy paint, I've just stolen this actually out of my daughter's art set that she had for her birthday. Shh, don't tell. Uh, and what I've done to make it um, actually adhere to the metal, you may find if you use paint it kind of just gets in little blobs and doesn't cover it properly. Add a little bit of washing up liquid or dish soap if you're in America, that's what you call it. Uh, put a little bit of that in the paint and you'll find it spreads over the surface much better. It wets it. So those are going to be my surfaces. I have nothing, a clear plastic lid, white with insulation, shiny silver and matte black. Now every good experiment, as well as having a control, where you do nothing, a whole load of things that you keep as very much the same as possible and one thing that you're changing, which is my covering. What we should also do is have a hypothesis, which is a good idea of what you think is going to happen. And that's what we're testing. We're testing here that different coverings affect the melting rate. Okay, so you might like to have a think about which of these you think is going to make the ice melt fastest or slowest, or is it going to make any difference at all? When you do this experiment, you don't have to use the same coverings as me. You can have a whole choose of ones you like. There is, in fact, a downloadable project sheet if you would like it. Pop along to www.battyboffin.co.uk, which is my website. And if you click on experiments, you'll find a whole load of printable project sheets there, each of them just one page of A4. And you can print off this one. This is number 26. OK, so number 26 will get you the instructions for how to do this if you want to do that on your own. OK, I'm now going to finish here and we'll have a look at what happens when I try this experiment out for myself. Right, here we are about to start the experiment. We have our insulated tub. That gets one piece of ice. We have our lidded tub. And we'll pop back in five minutes and see what's happened. our mini greenhouse and that has completely gone we have no more ice left right so we've got an hour now and I'm just going to actually take all of these off and have a comparison so that you can see okay so that's the insulation foils actually doing the best of all of them open is nice and the so basically the covered ones with some kind of insulation the greenhouse did appallingly. The open one was the next worst, it looks like. 
Okay, I'll cover those all up. We'll come back in five minutes. Okay, at one hour and ten minutes, we have got the insulated one getting pretty small there. Looks like a transparent slug, which I'm glad it isn't because that's kind of gross. Um, we've got that one's doing rather better, still looks rather slug like in a pool of water. That one's pretty much completely gone, I think. Oh, there is the other, there's a tiny bit of ice left in there, but very, very little. And this one is hmm, not doing so well as the silver one. I think the silver is going to win. All right, one hour 15 in. We have got a small transparent ice slug. We have got a larger transparent ice slug. We have got a yep, pool of water and a very small transparent ice slug. Um, mm, bit of a toss up between these two, I think. Which one's going to win? One hour twenty. And the insulated one is almost gone. We've got about three centimetres there, or an inch if you work in old money. Um, we have got, that's a longer piece there. Yeah, it's about what, seven or eight centimetres. And in the black mat, that, that has gone, I think. Is that gone? One minute 25. We have got a pool of water there, so I declare the winner to be foil. So we found that the silver foil was in fact the best one at keeping the heat out. And if you know a little bit of physics, that shouldn't surprise you. We know that shiny things, as well as reflecting light, also reflect heat. So this went a little way towards reflecting some of the heat away from the ice, thus enabling it to stay ice a little bit longer. Okay, have fun with this experiment yourself and I'll see you next time, Batty fans. Bye for now.